Good morning, people of Hazel Park and St. Paul's United Methodist. Good to be with you again here in the heart of worship as we gather in the presence of God in the spirit of Christ. Today, we want to uh, try to recapture a sense of joy, something that's probably been missing in most of our lives lately as we've struggled with this coronavirus and as we've been restricted to our homes. And yet the possibility, the reality is that joy exists all around us, whether we see it or not. Before we go any further, I want to remind you of something that I said last week that I don't want any of us to ever forget. And that is this truth, an eternal truth. And it is this, that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the truth. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, where you've not been, what you tried to do, what you didn't do, what you wanted to do. It doesn't matter who you love and who loves you. It doesn't matter about anything else. The gospel truth is that God loves you and me, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. The only thing we can do is accept the fact that God loves us. Hold on to that truth, will you please? It is so desperately important and pass it on to everyone you encounter in the week to come. Before we go on any further, I want to just say a few things personally this morning. Uh, one of the things that my wife Cheryl and I have loved to do in our retirement years now is to be free to travel and as we travel to seek to do some mission work in the various places that we have gone. And as I sit here today and I look into the screen and I see the picture behind me, the picture that hangs on the wall, I'm reminded of one of those trips when we went to Haiti. We went there to be of help and support after they went through their catastrophe a few years ago. And what did we discover? Wonderful people. People who were loved by God and people who loved us. And as much as we sought to give to them, they gave even more back to us. What a blessing it has been to travel. It's something we as desperately enjoy doing and look to do more of in the years to come. But enough about me. Let's get back to what we're here for. Today, in the midst of our worship, <clears throat> we're going to seek to invite God back into the center of our lives. Back into the center of our lives so we can get a French dose of joy direct from Jesus himself. The kind of joy that Jesus spoke about when these words were penned in John's Gospel, in chapter 15. It says, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. For I am the vine and you are the branches. Inviting God back into the center of our lives so that we can be linked directly with him. And then it concludes with these words. For I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. That's what we're looking for this morning. God's joy being deep within us, in spite of the circumstances of life, and our joy being complete as we live with and serve our God. Let's take a moment and be in prayer together now. Dear God, I want to give you thanks for all the blessings of life that you provided in this past week to each and every one of us. Blessings that maybe we haven't even noticed or captured yet. Blessings that surround us, that sustain us, that give us hope, that remind us that we are yours that you have grabbed hold of us in a way that will keep you from ever letting go of us, that you will guide us and direct us in these difficult times, and that you will show us how it is that as we work our way through this crisis that is among us, that your joy will be a part of what we offer to the world around us, and that we claim for ourselves and which lifts us beyond whatever it is that we are struggling with this day. We thank you, dear God, 
for being with us, for being our God, for providing what we need today and every day to rediscover the joy that you have in store for us. Okay, let's get back to that spirit of joy that we're looking for this morning. Let's unpack some things biblically, spiritually, that might help us as we go along with it. As I said earlier, it's an elusive blutter, butterfly, this spirit of joy so many times in life. We have to start by analyzing what joy is in terms of the root meaning of the word. Interestingly enough, the Greek word for joy is chara, and it comes from the word charis, which is the Greek word for grace. And so when you think about it that way, you realize that joy is basically a byproduct of God's grace, a grace that does not get confined and a joy that does not get limited by the degree of happiness or sadness that surrounds us. Joy then is a divine spirit-given expression that flows into us and most likely and hopefully flows out of us, especially in the darkest and deepest times of life. It's a spirit that is deeply rooted in our faith and in our God, a spirit that, as First Peter says, it's defined not by the circumstances around us, but by the spirit that indwells us. What do the scriptures have to tell us about joy? I want to invite you to look at a couple of them with me this morning. And so if you need to pause this to go get a Bible, please do. I'll wait. Give you a few minutes to get it. Well, hopefully, maybe you're back now and you've got a Bible at hand. What do the scriptures have to tell us about joy? Let's look first at Psalm chapter 30, verses 4 and 5, and then again in verses 11 and 12. The psalmist writes these words. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For God's anger is but for a moment, yet his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. For you have turned my mourning into dancing, O Lord. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. You know, when we get into tight places and difficult circumstances, we, we want things to change quickly, do we not? We want kind of an instantaneous relief. And yet the reality of life is that often it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes it takes more than a night even. Sometimes it takes more than a week of nights. But if we stay with it, if we endure whatever is in front of us, if we embrace what's in front of us and seek to be friended, if we allow ourselves to open up with what we can learn in the face of whatever that hardship is, eventually we discover the morning, the freshness, the newness of life after what has been weighing us down. And so the psalmist reminds us that weeping may last for the night. Difficulties may continue to be present for us right now. But if we stay in touch with God and we look for God in the midst of these difficult moments, we will find the path that leads us out of the night and into the morning. Remember that. That's an expression of what joy is all about. The second thing that I want you to look at is, again, in John's Gospel, in chapter 16 at this point, discover what's found in chapter 16, verse 21 and 22. Some of you out there, most likely you, the women, are going to better understand this than we, the men. But it's important for all of us. 
Jesus writes, says, When a woman is in labor, she has pain. Well, there's an understatement for you. Because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish. Why? Because of the joy of having brought a human being into this world. I have yet to meet a woman who has not been able to say to me, I'm glad I had that child. It was a difficult time. It might have even been a challenging time. But I'm glad that I was able to bring that new life into this world. And you know what? I no longer remember the pain. Oh, I can call it up if I want to. But life is filled with joy because of this child or these children that I have brought into the world. I wouldn't trade that pain for anything other than the joy of the new life that I've been blessed with. John here is reminding us that difficult times come and there's struggle again in the many of those times. But if the pain is there because we are seeking to bring new life, to bring birth, to bring a, a new expression of God's love and grace into this world, then it's worth any of the pain that one might go through. And then there's what's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, in verses 1 and 2. This is one that, that always intrigues me every time I turn to it and read it and ponder it. Paul's writing, and he says this, We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. One of the things you miss so often in this reading is it says church is. There's a plural on the word church. There were many small worshiping bodies, small groups, if you will, who were called the Macedonian church. And Paul's now talking about all of them, not just one or two of them or some select portion of them. He's talking about the whole church community there in Macedonia. And he goes on to say, for during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy, there's that word again, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. When's the last time you heard or you and I ever gave expression to a phrase that says, our abundant joy is found in the midst of our affliction or our hardship. Hear it again. The scripture says, during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty blended together and overflowed in a wealth of generosity. That's an amazing expression to me. Again, here we are in the midst of a difficult financial time. Markets tumbling Resurrecting a little, tumbling some more, people losing jobs, difficult times, hard times, economy struggling, people struggling. And yet, there is the possibility to experience joy. There is the reality that we can find great joy in the midst of these challenging financial times when we allow ourselves to be generous, generous spirits, generous givers, generous expressors of love and kindness and grace. Again, joy is not the absence of hardship and difficulty. It's finding the possibilities and the opportunities to be a blessing in the midst of the hard times. And there's one other expression of joy that I happen to love deeply. And that says Jesus is nearing his own death and he's heard on that night when he's about to be betrayed and crucified where he turns to the disciples and he says, you now therefore have sorrow. 
know I'm going to be leaving you. You can sense it. You can feel it. Go ahead and have your sorrow. In the face of death, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to rail against God even. Because God understands how painful death time is. But he goes on to say, Go ahead and have your sorrow, but I will see you again. And he closes with these words, And the joy that you know, the joy that you know, no one can take from you. Think about that for a minute. Every time we lose someone close to us, every time we lose a loved one, we have sadness, rightfully so. And rather than deny it, we need to embrace it. We need to work it out of our system, however we do that. And at the same time that we're expressing that grief, that hardship, that struggle, we need to remember the good times, the times we shared with that person, the memories we have, the blessings that they provided us, all the wonderful things that we shared in that lifetime together. For those are the joys that not even death can take from us. And so over and over again, we see in the scriptures this understanding that the joy is a gift that we are given if we live in the heart of God, if we keep God at the center of our existence, whatever we're going through. It will not eliminate the struggles or the hardships, but God will be with us in the midst of them. And with God at our side, pointing us to the opportunities that are present, showing us the paths to follow, opening up the windows and the doors for fresh air and the ray of sunlight to come in upon us, we will discover joy repeatedly. We'll discover joy in unlikely places and we'll find joy to be at the heart of our lives, just as joy has always been at the heart of God's life. You see, the way to reclaim life in the midst of difficulty, the way to reestablish our faith the way we want it to be in the midst of difficulties is to enter back into an intimate relationship with God, to be tied in like the vine in the branches, to trust that God's joy can flow to us and through us. And so I want you to take a moment right now. I want you to enter into a time of intimacy with God. Open yourself up. Picture God placing arms of care and compassion around you. Feel yourself being lifted, if you will, lightened in the midst of these difficult times because of the buoyancy that God can provide, the new life that God can provide. Let joy become possible inside of you. Let joy begin to live in your mind and in your heart. And let joy be a consistent quality of your life in the days and the weeks to come. You want joy? Invite God in to the center of your life. Don't keep them just out on the fringes. How do you get that joy? You move from passively waiting for the Holy Spirit to be present into an active seeking and grasping for and expressing the Holy Spirit in the midst of your life. Let God this week do something radically different with you and for you. 
Let God help you do something unexpected, maybe even crazy, as you go through life this week. And let it happen on a regular basis. What do I mean by that? How about this? How about when nobody's expecting it? You just break out into song. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Or how about when you're in home? You just grab one of the people in the house and you start dancing with them. You just snuggle up against them and you just boogie around for just a moment. Or how about when you're out, those limited times that you're out even, you do some random act of kindness. You, you do something for somebody that they least expect. Buy part of their groceries. Pump them some gas. Give them a smile even. Look at them and say, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Buy a flower. Drop it at your neighbor's doorstep. Ring the doorbell and run like crazy so they don't know who it was. And they can just ponder the possibilities. I dare you. I dare you to break into joy sometime this week in some creative, expressive way. And let the joy of the Lord flow through you into this world. You see, joy isn't just a possibility. It's what's expected of us as disciples. Why? Simply so that what John said in his gospel will be true in our lives. That God's joy may reside deeply and fully within us and our joy may be complete as it's lived out in the world. Picture it happening. Because if you can see it in your mind, you can make it a reality in your life. This week, no matter what else is going on, how about being joy? Let's close now with the Lord's Prayer. If you were with us last week, you know that I taught you some movements to the Lord's Prayer to embody it in a more complete way. And I invite you, if you know those movements, to join with me now. And if you're not familiar with them, that you pay attention and you seek to learn them. Because we're going to close in the Lord's Prayer most every week. And I'd sure like it if we could do it with the motions to the Lord's Prayer as well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, just as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. See you next time, right here in the heart of worship, with the joy of the Lord residing deep within us. We've got the joy, 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 joy down in our hearts. Where? Down in our hearts. Where? Down in our hearts. We've got the joy, 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 joy down in our hearts. Down in our hearts to stay. Have a blessed week. And may the joy of the Lord be yours always. Amen.